we send you into the hardest zones in the world. There are gangs, there are this, and you nearly couldn't get on the stool. I couldn't <laughs> <help. laughs> right now, You're all right now, you're yeah. all good. Happy landings. Uh, are we scarier than any gangland criminals that you have to meet? Potentially. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen on this show. You yeah. Know? Uh, I think it's my eighth time on it, and every yeah. time we've always run out of time because there's so much to talk about. Yeah. But, you know... Go on, then, far away. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about the, 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 new, the new series. We've got episode four. is out on Sunday, 9pm, Sky One. Yep. Uh, this is Extreme World. Yep. Uh, but what, who, who are you meeting in this series? What are it's you doing? It's set in Naples. It's about the Camorra, yep. uh, which is one of the oldest organised crime groups in the world. Um, recently, a lot of the old bosses have been put in prison. They're getting sentences to 30 to 40 years. Uh, and as a consequence, the younger younger members of that are fighting for territory so okay. they can run extortion rings, drug rackets, etc. But also, I meet five female members of the Camorra for Sunday lunch. Okay. Not, much lunch, not, not much lunch. No? Coffee, lots of cigarettes. So, there they go. Oh. And trust me, one of them, one on the bottom left there, she's just done 25 years in prison for being a cocaine dealer. Ooh, uh, okay. And the on the right is a sister, and she's under house arrest for the next four years. What? They look uh, so nice! And, 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 the, and, the one, and the one, the leopard... He, well, he was born a he, he's now a she, and that's one of their sons, stroke daughter now. Wow. Uh, they were fascinating. And one of the things they said, and I'd love to know what your response to this is going to be, they said to me, the men are in prison, we're now running things, and people are more scared of us because we're women, because we don't forgive like men, and we're crueler. We are <gasps> grudges, yeah. Ooh. We definitely are grudges, and, that's true. And, they, and they, had me, they wanted me to go out, they said, you look like you could go out on the streets and sell for us, but you cross us, we will kill you. Oh, my oh word. My God. <sighs> What happens is these younger gangs, they go in and they just fire randomly across the square to say they're taking over the area. And in certain places, 90% of all the shops have to pay. Okay. And if they don't pay, they end up being wow. killed. Oh and is that the hardest thing you've ever had to hear from somebody over all of the series that you've done? Sadly not, no. I think one of the worst things that ever happened to me was in India when I was talking to a sex trafficker who, who estimated that he killed between 300 and 400 young girls. Oh, my God. And I, didn't, I wasn't expecting that, and that's the only probable time that I wanted to actually remove someone from the planet, yeah. though I couldn't at the time. What did you I do? Not a lot, really. I told him to go in the out of my sight. Uh, my mm. translator, who was also a criminologist, was in tears. My team were in tears. They've seen a lot. Been for mm. Afghanistan 15 odd times each. I don't suppose there's anyone you can go to to report him. Not really, because he was being protected by the authorities. That often happens. Uh, we, we, At the we, time, some members of the authorities. How do you deal with something like that, though? Because you're a dad and you, mm. you, you come home and you've been to these terrible places and seen these terrible things. We were talking about, you know, we've what all had people to talk to. And Who do you talk to? And that's to? what we do. We do a thing called TRIM, Trauma Risk Management. Uh, we sort of adopted it after we learnt it from, from the Marines out in Afghan. Yeah. And um, you sit down and you talk and you listen. And I think that's a really important thing. You you've ever a lot of people are sending all the time these days. We want to send all the time. We want to send. We're here, we're that, we're on social media. But I think the real important thing, if you're a friend of someone, is that you listen. Mm. You, you know, you talk about having the dog and strength. I talk to Bruno, my dog, as well, when I get home, if everyone's in bed. Oh. Uh, but, yeah, so I think talking and listening, and that's yeah. what we do. We debrief at the end of the day, because a lot of post-traumatic stress comes from people not debriefing immediately after the traumatic yeah. event, and yeah. you lock it away, and it becomes a bigger and bigger problem. So I'd say to anyone out there, it may be difficult to start it, but start the conversation as soon as possible. Mm. Is there anyone in, in particular you would say that has, that has helped you, or do you say it's a team thing? It is a very much a team thing, but we're a very close team. Yeah. So it's just a sound man, a cameraman, Dave on sound, Jonathan. Yeah. Any security go with you? No. We have advisors. We had an advisor in Iraq, Syria, and we had an advisor in Libya. But other than that, no, it's the team. But we rely heavily mm. on the people on the ground, the local journalist, the local yeah. fixer. Better to have someone who knows the atmospherics there then, no disrespect, a stranger from another country who's you know, been trained by the military. You want someone that's on side, not someone that's perceived to be an enemy. Oh, and, and, sorry. Not, sorry, Linda. A normal sort of day at work, someone will come home and maybe talk to the other half. Are you the opposite of that? Do you try and protect your wife from what mm, you've seen? Not at all. She... <laughs> she wants to know exactly what's going on all the yeah. time. Uh, sometimes I can't because of the amount of, of satellite of course, yeah. uh, phone signal. But uh, I, I've always believed that the more she's aware, then the more that she can cope with it should it go wrong. Yeah. Um, oh. Other people are different. Does that not sure. scare you, leaving your family, knowing you're going into these Thinking that you might not be coming back. You do cross, crosses your mind. There's Renee yeah. now. She's watching, as my <laughs> mum and dad are. Um, yeah, no, look, it's part of the job, and you take that on board when you 
do the job. I'm not, you know, I'm not a nurse. I, 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 I couldn't look after someone well enough to, to probably save their lives, but I've been supposedly trained to do so. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't do the proper hard jobs. We just go in, yeah. we go out. Other well, people are there. They live there. And, you know, that's one thing you have to be really, really bear in mind, that when you go and make a documentary, yeah. you leave it uh, roughly the same position but as you when found. you arrived. Do you know, you have six seconds to answer this question. Do you think you do Strictly? Uh, never say never. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I was asked the first time. No, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on.